Hello and welcome to the Grizzle War Master. My name is Doug and we are going to take another look at the rules previews provided by Games Workshop community page. Uh, we've gotten a lot this last week, so, um, both in just kind of general rules as well as some uh, spells and prayers type rules. So we're going to break this down into two different videos. This first one, we're going to look at things like unit size, command abilities, and the core battalions. Um, and then in a later video, we will look at all of the magic related stuff. So let's go ahead and dive in to the rules that we got this last week. All right, first we got a rule on unit coherency. Um, and this essentially is going to align with 40K rules. Basically, if you have a unit that is two to five models, you have to be within one inch horizontal or six inches vertical of one other model in the unit. Then once you go past five models, you have to be within one inch horizontal and six inches vertical of two other models in the unit. Um, this will make large units with large base sizes a little difficult to handle. So you're gonna to have to be careful with how you position those. Um, anything bigger than a 32 millimeter base, so we're talking Stormcast and some of the bigger elite infantry for some of the others, will have um, a tough time keeping coherency and getting everybody in their unit to attack. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, that's quite a bit different than we see in 40K. Um, 40K does not have a lot of unit models that are on 40 millimeter or bigger bases. Um, so we will have to see how that, uh, how that shapes up. Um, there are a couple of things that will happen because of this unit coherency, aside from it being tougher for larger units of big base models to work together. Um, it is going to make zoning out areas and objectives a bit harder, um, especially for you know units, regular sized units of one wound creatures are going to be more than five models, which means they are going to have to stay within an inch of more than two, which means they cover a much smaller area than they currently do. It's also going to prevent you from daisy chaining models back to uh, take advantage of rules that after this edition or with the, the new third edition, there may not be much that's that, uh, not wholly within rules that are just within. So it's gonna be a little tougher to daisy chain back to those um, within rules. So we'll see how that works out for some like the horde units and stuff. Um, and it's going to make abilities that allow you to remove a model from your enemy's army to be potentially very impactful. So think of Star Drake's biting models, um, spells that remove a specific model. Um, giant, I think giants have ability to squeeze a specific model and kill it. So you can more easily break unit coherency with these new rules. So you're not only gonna have to be paying attention to how you move, but what enemies you might encounter who can mess with your coherency. So. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be potentially very impactful depending on the armies facing off against each other. All right, we also got some new, well, some revamped basic command abilities. Um, All-out attack basically combines uh, the previous all-out attack and volley fire, and instead of re-rolling ones to hit, it now just adds one to hit rolls. Um, that, I think, is going to be more powerful than the re-rolling ones because I believe there are other ways a lot of armies get to re-roll ones. Not very often with attack, but especially with all-out defense because all-out defense is similarly is going to change to add one to save rolls instead of re-rolling ones. Now with command abilities, there are several armies that have command abilities that are re-roll ones. Mystic Shield allows you to re-roll ones and units with shields, some of them have a reroll ones to save mechanic. So you are gonna see a lot of armies get stuff like three plus to say, or the ability to get up to a three plus to save rerolling ones, or heroes with two plus to save rerolling ones. 
that is going to make a lot of armies far more endurant than they are now and really cool um it when you combine this with some of the other rules we're going to talk about um the game is going to change dramatically it is going to be very different how you move around the table how you construct your army how endurant some of those armies are how impactful different units are going to be now um monsters with big rending attacks are going to be more valuable than they ever have been before um so yeah let's go ahead and get through the rest of these we'll kind of loop around and tie this all back together as we get to the end um we also got a new command ability brand new rally which is basically it's a powerful new ability it gives you a small but significant i think one in six chance to return a slain model to a unit so you roll so you pick you spend the command dice uh, you pick somebody within your range so if you're the general wholly within 18 inches and you roll a d6 for every slain model in the unit and on each six a slain model is returned it's not a great chance but you know a unit of 10 guys you're probably going to get one back a unit of 20 guys you could get up to three back um actually you're closer to getting two than not with 10 guys so it could be pretty powerful um it can be especially powerful well one on horde units where you're going to get to roll a lot of dice or if you get super lucky on those elite and super elite infantry or even cavalry can be there is no restriction on the units other than there has to still be models on the table it can't be a unit of one because then there's not a unit to target with the command ability but you can take um a unit of um, new the new annihilators who have three wounds. You get real lucky and roll a six. You brought a three wound model back. Or, or how about using it on a unit of Kurnoth with uh, four, five wounds? I think four or five wounds. I don't remember how much they have, but yeah, a lot. You know, there are a lot of infantry. Uh, theoretically, if you were a Sons of Bayamut player, you could roll this for a unit of three Gargants. Or the the uh, whatever their the smaller gargants are one of those maybe even two of those are missing you could hey throw caution to the wind roll a die or two and if you get a six hey you just got a 12 or 14 wound model back that's pretty that's pretty cool um can be pretty powerful so yeah i'm looking forward to using that ability um this could be really good for the new vampire army the Soulblight army because you could have a unit of skeletons who get deathless minion saves then have a four up to get up also can heal and also could have this ability spent on them at the start of the hero phase which is also when you heal so you could from the grave sites and things and from the heroes so you could do this first so say you have a unit of 20 skeletons 30 skeletons 15 of them missing you roll these you roll these first, get three or four of them back, then do your healing from the gravesides. That could be cool. So yeah, there are a lot of cool ways that this rally ability could be used. All right, now let's go into unit, to army company, uh, composition. We've got a new force org chart. Uh, it will seem very familiar. Uh, it's the same general breakdown as it's always been. Uh, with the one to six leaders, you have to have three plus, again, at 2,000 points where most tournaments will be played. Um, three plus battle line, zero to four behem uh, behemoths, zero to four artillery. We got the endless spells and invocations that have already been limited with the tw uh, 2020 General's Handbook. Yeah. The new things we're getting, uh, we got added, were reinforced units, which we'll talk more about on the next slide. Uh, under strength units and we've got confirmed that the, we are getting the new battlefield sizes so they will the new battlefield sizes will align with 40k meaning if you play both games you can use the same map now for both games so that's cool all right unit size and going forward in the third edition units will be either they'll come in one of four sizes assuming they're not a single model unit they're either under strength, meaning you have less than the minimum size to field the unit. They're the, a basic unit, minimum size, so 3, 5, 10, 20 even for rats and uh, grots, uh, whatever that is, 
that would be a basic unit. Then you have a reinforced unit, which is double its basic size. So for storm, they're using Stormcast as an example here. So if your basic size is five, a reinforced unit is 10. If that unit is a battle line unit, it can be raised up to triple size. That counts as another use. If we go back to, oh, sorry. If we go back to this um, force org chart, contest of generals chart, if you want to call it that, uh, we have a limit on how many reinforced units we can have. Uh, zero to four in a 2,000 point game. So of all your units on the table, only four of them can be beyond their minimum size. And if they are a battle line, this isn't in the release, but we've seen a leak that seems to give these rules and this this uh, article by the community uh, community site seems to suggest that those rules are accurate and if you make a battle line unit triple size then you use up two of those reinforced unit slots so if you had two battle lines that you wanted to have triple sized those would be your only reinforced units in your army now <laughs> this does seem like quite the restriction but when we take into account the new coherency uh, rules, a lot of armies probably aren't going to want to go too much over their base size because it gets difficult to use them effectively. Now some, like Mortec Guard, you, a lot of people like to play them uh, reinforced, what we'll call reinforced. I personally like to have a couple of minimum units and then only one larger unit, but some people like to have big old 40 man blocks of, of more tech guard. That will no longer exist. They are going to have to change the unit sizes. And I assume this will be in the general's handbook 2021 with the new points, there will be new unit sizes. Because now, if your minimum size is five, your maximum size, if your battle line is 15, if you are not battle line, it's 10 now. Um, so for a lot of armies, the size allowances for their units is going to change dramatically. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we'll have to wait and see. It does provide some restrictions, but I think this is one more tool they're using to make monsters and heroes better. Monsters more so than heroes. But when the enemy can't field as many giant anvil units or even giant hammer units it makes individual monsters a little more easy to use um, especially ones with lots of movement because they can go out and challenge those smaller units and not have to risk getting tied up for the entire game or just being hammered down by you know 20 hearth guard berserkers or you know gummed up by 60 grots or something like that so Although 60 Grots is still a possibility because Grots come in units of 20. But anyways, it's going to limit and make, it's going to force people to play MSU for at least a big chunk of their army probably. All right. We also got the core battalion rules. Uh, so these are very interesting. Uh, they're pretty good I, um, in layout. We've got a Warlord, which... Let you feel a lot. It can you can have up to six heroes in that. One of which can have more than ten wounds. Um, that's what the the uh, Lord Celestine riding Drakoth uh, icon up here means. It's a a commander, which is just any leader. So they can be on a monster. They can have whatever. They can be a god. Um, they just there's no restrictions. The smaller heroes are sub commanders, and they have to have less than ten wounds for them to be selected in that battalion. So in this Warlord Battalion, you could have two any leaders, then you have to have at least two leaders that have less than 10 wounds, and then you have to have at least one troop up to two, and then up to four of those sub-commanders. Yeah, and then we've got the icon for troops, icon for artillery, icon for monsters, who are behemoths that are not leaders. Which is nice that they finally um, they spelled that out. 
And that is, uh, that's interesting. I'm not sure, they, I wonder if that unit icon is accurate for all of the rules or just these battalion um, organizations. Because if monsters are behemoths that are not leaders, that means there are going to be a lot of monsters on the field who aren't going to get monstrous rampage because they are also leaders. Uh, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. That This is one of the places where we get, we get trickles of information that don't give us a full picture, and we some assumptions may or may not be correct. So we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, so there's... It's going to be pretty easy to get large chunks of your army into these um, regiments. I would go out, go so far as to say it will be relatively easy for most factions, if they don't have good battalions of their own, to become a two-drop army. Maybe even a one-drop with the battalion, with the battle regiment. Not sure, but we'll have to wait and see. But let's go take a look at what all these symbols underneath mean. Because they, these battalions do not do what you would assume they do. So the battalion battle icons, or ability icons, um, seem to just spell out what the core battalions do. We don't know if they're used for anything else. Which seems kind of silly to make these icons instead of just throwing in the words if these icons are only going to be used for the core battalions. But anyways, let's look at... The, each of the core battalions and what which of these they get. So if you take a Warlord Battalion, they get the Strategist and Magnificent abilities. And those are two cool ones. Magnificent gives you... Well, when you pick enhancements for your army, you can pick one extra enhancement. We don't know what enhancements are yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, are those command traits? Are they mount traits? Uh, are do all of those fall under the enhancement area? Uh, who knows? But the way they say for your army seems to suggest that this is maybe a new thing we're getting, where you can add little little uh, quirks to your army, a little perks to your army. Maybe not super cool abilities, but a little bit of something. Um, and they also get strategists, which means. Basically, in one t turn, in one of your hero turns, it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the battle, you receive an extra command point. I don't know why you wouldn't just take it at the beginning, um, but there you are. Uh, battle Regiment, which is the big one, gets the Unified, which is the one-drop deployment. That would imply that none of the rest of these give you one-drop deployment. So, your army would have to be exclusively in the battle regiment to get to a one drop. Um, so I'm kind of actually glad that that we're not like not every army is going to be two drop because that that just seems kind of excessive. Um, if ev if everybody has the ability to be a one drop, it no longer is significant. So, but you do have to give up something for taking that battle regiment. You give up the ability to take maybe a couple of uh, battalions or a battalion or two within your normal codex that maybe give you better abilities um, by sacrificing having to have a few more drops. So, not sure that this one will always be what you want to take, especially because I think with the new command abilities, especially all-out defense, uh, and some of the other things that, you know, the, some of the heroic abilities, I think alpha strikes aren't going to be as bad as they used to be. Those few armies who can really hit you hard with an alpha strike aren't going to be quite as devastating as they were before. But let's continue with the battalions. We can talk about that later. Uh, Grand Battery gives you Slayers, which is basically you get to get use all-out attack or unleash hell. Uh, the cool thing with these is it's you without a command point being spent, but also without a command being issued, which means they don't have to have a hero or a unit champion um, to be able to use the command ability. So this is good for, in this case, artillery, which um, don't 
they would have to have a hero near, nearby to get these command abilities normally because they don't have a unit leader. Um, same thing with monsters. Uh, same thing with units that have had their commander or their unit commander, unit champion sniped out somehow, you know, uh, dragon bite, dr giant crush, um, spells, whatever. So these are cool little abilities. And they're all, the rest of them are all essentially getting to use a command ability without the command point being spent or the command being issued. So they're cool. I think that that's always a nice little benefit. Now, the one thing we don't know about core battalions, well, a couple of things we don't know about them. One, we don't know if they give you a bonus command point and an artifact. We don't know what their costs are going to be. Um, or any other abilities or rules that might go along with battalions. Because this was these few little uh, boxes, these uh, little sheets, tear sheets from the article was all we really got on them. So it's going to be hard to tell if these are valuable or not. In 3rd edition, command points are no longer worth 50 points of, you know, of building your army. Um, they're going to be far more frequent. In fact, I would say they're easily going to be double the command points you would normally get. Um, and if that is the case, then they should be worth 25 points, not 50. I've always assumed that artifacts, most artifacts, uh, fall in the 20 to 30 point range. So, all told, these battalions shouldn't cost more than 75 points, in my opinion. If they cost more than that, I'm not sure they'll be worth it. So, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm also not sure if you're going to have the ability to buy command points anymore, since they are so prevalent. Um, and that you were willing to spend 50 points before to have the ability to react if you went second. Um, it was more of an insurance policy you were buying, not a... Um, sometimes it was, I have an army that's command point starved, I have a lot of special abilities I need command points for, and it's worth it to be able to get those combos. Um, but for a lot of armies, now when you've got going second, you just get two command points, it's not going to be necessary to buy command points up front. All right, a couple of other things we learned from the narrative that came in some of the articles explaining how the new edition was going to affect different armies. Um, you know, like we got the Slaves to Darkness, Stormcast, the, um, I think, the Orc War Clans, Heat Knights of Slash, maybe some more. Um, those, those articles trickled in some of these abilities or... It, but the narratives did mention a couple of things that were um, noteworthy. The biggest one of which that we haven't covered so far is that it sounds like no unit can get can have more than one command ability on them in the same at the same time. Most command command abilities only work for a single phase. So what you're what you're really looking at is in the fight phase, you won't be able to have all-out attack and all-out defense on you at the same time. Uh, in fact, that may be the only case. Although, although there are command abilities, for example, um, and I, know, I don't know if that applies to all command abilities, including ones for your army. So there are some armies that give buffs, and I'm thinking Slaves to Darkness specifically um, have, oh no, that's just an ability, it's not a command ability. Nagash has the command ability that everyone within a certain range rerolls ones to save, and I think ones to hit, maybe. Um, but if he had that command ability going, which is worth it, they couldn't also get all out attack and all out defense at the same time because they already had a command ability. That seems to be what they're indicating. Um, a lot of command abilities are one and done, like, you know, making a. Uh, Swift, I think it is, uh, where you, you make a uh, a run a six, or you know rerolling a charge, or you know giving somebody an inspiring presence. Those 
those are one and done. They don't persist, so they're not going to necessarily interfere with the spending of other command points or using other command abilities. But something to keep in mind is you're not going to be able to necessarily super stack all of these command abilities. Now, other abilities along with command abilities, there seems to be no restriction on that front. But there was a lot of cool rules stuff dropped today. Um, I think this is really shaping up to be a rule set that really is going to reset how the game is played. Um, with the size of units, with the coherency, with the new command abilities, monstrous rampages, heroic abilities, um, games are going to be played very different. There's going to be lots of MSU. Um, we might not see quite as many of the giant hammer units or, or even uh, giant anvil units. And there's going to be a lot more maneuvering. It'll be interesting to see what the new battle plans look like and how those will interact with the fact that you're going to have probably more units than your, than your armies normally field. So there's a, lot to, there's a lot to digest here, and I cannot wait to see what other rules they trickle out to us in the next couple of weeks and to get my hands on that rule book and really start digging into this um, getting armies on the table and trying this out. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments uh, down below, and we will see you again very shortly with a rules preview on spells and prayers. Thanks.